Hi everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you guys know, recently I have been super impressed with the Mazda products because they have amazing engineering, great product development, and even better manufacturing quality. So I'm super excited to talk about the 2025 Mazda CX-50 Hybrid, which is a new addition to the CX-50 lineup. And this one has a 2.5 liter hybrid system taken directly from Toyota. So you got kind of best of both worlds, Mazda engineering, Mazda manufacturing, mixed in with the Toyota powertrain. So I'm super impressed. In fact, I think this is one of the best compact hybrid SUVs right now in the market. So I'm going to give you seven reasons why I'm very impressed with the CX-50 hybrid. And I'm gonna go through one by one and tell you how much I like this vehicle. Let's go. Welcome back. So I'm super excited to talk about the 2025 CX-50 hybrid. By the way, right here in Canada, we pronounce Mazda. In the US, it's Mazda, and in Japan, it's Mazda. Well, I'm Canadian, so I'm gonna pronounce it the Canadian way. But right off the bat, why do I like this vehicle so much? And what are the seven reasons why I think this is the best compact SUV hybrid in this price range? Well, the first one is the quality. And in case you didn't know, the CX-50 is produced alongside the Toyota Corolla Cross in their brand new factory called the Mazda Toyota Manufacturing Plant in Huntsville, Alabama. Now the two are produced in the same factory, but the equipment are actually different between the two. And the Corolla Cross and Mazda CX-50 do not share platform, except for some of the common practices and standardized method. Otherwise, they're operating as two different uh, processes right inside the same factory. But I do think that they both share some quality standard and processes, so they kind of benefit from each other. And so you'll see that uh, right off the bat, the quality is excellent in this CX-50 because you'll see that it's actually like 2.9 millimeter there, 2.9 millimeter for gap. Can you imagine that in this price range, you'll never find this kind of quality? 3.5, so that's pretty normal. Back to 2.9, and then right here, also 2.9 millimeter. That's unheard of in a sort of a compact segment because you only get that kind of quality in um, much more expensive vehicles like a Lexus model. And also, normally I only see a thin gaps for those cars that are built in Japan in some of the more experienced uh, factories. But even though this is a new factory, only opened a few years ago, it's already producing cars with a really tight gap. And I think it's actually a better panel alignment and panel gap than even what I saw in the Corolla Cross. I think for some reason the Mazda have a higher standard because you can see the alignment is also super good. It is really difficult in manufacturing to line up these edges. You'll see this kind of very difficult curvature and panel alignment. Even here, it kind of lining up here and lining up the gas cap. This is not something that most manufacturers can actually accomplish. But with Mazda, look at that. It's all perfect alignment. This thing is flush. If I look at it, it just looks like a one single sheet of panel. And I've always said that about Mazda product, but their panel alignment and panel quality is probably one of the best in the world. You can't even get this quality, even if you pay a 300,000 or half a million dollar for a car, this is the best exterior quality I've seen in any vehicle, regardless of the price. So that's the first reason. The second reason why I really like the CX-50 hybrid, along with the CX-50 also, is the paint job. The paint processes are shared between Toyota and Mazda at the MTM factory. But um, in terms of quality, I think they've taken extra time to get the paint quality just right. And I can see the gloss and the clear coat, almost perfect. Very little orange peel, which is unusual because in most Toyota products, I see a lot more orange peel. But in Mazda product, you don't see too much. Now it's maybe a little bit less noticeable because of this machine gray color. But even if you look at the um, glossy black, finish right here and then also the quality of the finish of the various components I think is absolutely excellent. I do believe some of the suppliers for the Mazda 650 are shared with the Toyota Corolla Cross suppliers as well but either way you're getting Toyota slash Mazda level of quality in terms of panel alignment and then also the paint quality as well. So those are some of the reasons why I love the CX-50 hybrid so far. So now I'm inside the CX-50 hybrid and of course just like all CX-50s I do really like the interior quality and interior engineering. So for example, this is all soft touch, whereas most Toyota products have moved to a hard plastic. So this is all soft here as well. And even the door is actually soft as well. And if you look at the Corolla Cross, for example, it's a lot of hard plastic uh, because they were just taking some cost out of the system. 
And so I take my hats off to Mazda for keeping many high quality components and materials. This all looks really fantastic. This double stitching look, looks really good. And all of the parts looks good. I mean, it looks like something that came straight out of a Japanese factory, to be honest with you. There's not a squeak or rattle. It's absolutely solid. I do have some complaints because I don't like the um, piano black here. You'll get scratched up easily. But in terms of quality, it's really well done. Even the shift knob, all this little stitching here is just fantastic quality. I do like the general layout as well because I still get real buttons here and knobs. And overall, I always really like the way that the Mazda designed the interior, just in terms of quality. Uh, and actually, the infotainment system works just fine. But as usual, I do complain about the fact that while I'm in the Apple CarPlay, everything is a touch panel. But as soon as I go back to normal Mazda menu, then it's no longer touch. And that's the same for all Mazda products. There's nothing wrong with the dial system here. Actually, it works pretty good and it's, it's quite intuitive and easy. But why compromise? Give us full touch panel, not kind of halfway, and bring this forward here so that I can actually navigate using the panel instead of this. I think this is just an old method. It works okay and most Mazda owners don't complain because they get used to it but it is not industry standard. So I just opened the hood of the CX-50 hybrid and this is my fourth point. It has a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine hybrid system which uses three electric motors, two in the front, one in the back. So the back is called E-axle which means it's fully electric motorized uh, power in the rear so it is all wheel drive. And what's interesting is that the Mazda CX-50 Hybrid uses the 2.5 liter engine with a hybrid, which is what we see in the RAV4 hybrid. As you guys know, we own one of the RAV4 hybrids as well. And so it's got a basic same system. It's a fourth generation Toyota hybrid system, not the fifth gen that Toyota introduced in the new Camry. But regardless, this is a proven powertrain. It's the best hybrid system in the world. And unlike Corolla Cross, it is using the 2.5 liter for the hybrid system instead of a two liter in the Corolla Cross. So it has plenty of power and torque, 219 horsepower and he has a pretty solid acceleration as a result but more than that just the whole refinement and smoothness of the hybrid system working between the electric motor the engine back and forth so sometimes the engine runs by itself sometimes the electric motors run by themselves sometimes it's combined together that whole system is extremely complicated but it's extremely well engineered and once again i will say that the Toyota hybrid system is the best in the world and I'm really glad that Mazda is using that engine system because no one else makes better hybrid system than Toyota. And in case you weren't aware, Toyota does own part of Mazda. So they do collaborate on many, many different projects and vehicles. And this is one of the best outcome you can get between Toyota and Mazda. The fifth reason why I absolutely love the CX-50 hybrid, especially considering the price and the value, is the fact that the steering feel and the steering characteristics are second to none. When you buy a small crossover these days or SUVs, you don't get much of a steering effort. It's kind of devoid of all characters and you don't even know which way that the car is pointed. But in the 650 hybrid or actually 650 in general, there's a really good feedback. I might even say if Porsche design affordable compact crossover, this is the way it's going to feel because the actual feedback, the steering effort, the actual characteristic of the steering feel is like a German car, like a Porsche almost. And this statement is kind of true for all Mazda products in general. They have a very good engineering method for creating some of the best steering feel, but it is very evident in the CX-50 hybrid. And again, in this price range, there's nothing else out there that can have this level of steering feel and handling. And it's one of the things I love the most about the CX-50 hybrid. Now, because Mazda tend to focus very much on having that sporty character compared to other brands, you also end up with um, a stiff but very controllable ride. They think corners like a sports sedan in many ways. Once again, something that you don't see in most uh, SUVs or crossovers in this price range, including products from Toyota or Honda. But it does also mean the ride is pretty stiff. So it may not be for everyone. If you want the softest, smoothest ride, you might want to go toward Honda or Toyota. But if you want the sporty, agile character, a good cornering, and as I mentioned, good handling, well, there's nothing else out there in this price range that can meet or exceed the sportiness of this CX-50. Um, but the ride does suffer a little bit. This one have a Goodyear Eagle tires, which isn't the best tire. And the result of that, you feel almost every pebbles. So the ride is quite stiff. I like it that way though. Uh, but for some people who really want the softer, cushy ride, 
well this may not be the one because CX50 and CX50 hybrid in general are designed to give you that sporty character that is kind of mimicking sports sedans and sport vehicles instead of a, a typical SUV or crossover. The seventh and the final point is the obvious one because the only reason why you will buy the hybrid system is the fact that it has a really good fuel efficiency. Indeed, the CX-50 hybrid has 40% better fuel efficiency than the counterpart, normal CX-50. So you can get, actually get 38 miles per gallon combined or 6.2 liter per 100 kilometers, which is outstanding. And in addition, you get 100 more miles or about 160 kilometers of range compared to the non-hybrid. So all around, this is an absolutely efficient compact SUV. And thanks again to the Toyota hybrid system working in conjunction with this CX-50 architecture. So it's really good mileage, extremely, extremely efficient. And also, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, the whole drivetrain and the way it handles is excellent. This car feels very different from, let's say, from Corolla Cross or from Corolla Cross Hybrid because Mazda really spends so much time and effort getting the steering effort and the steering feel right. So it feels more like a sports sedan than it feels like SUV or crossover. Really good feedback from the road, very planted, and superb handling for a crossover. Much better than most Toyota or Honda product, and that's one of the reasons why I really love Mazda. But more than that, I think Mazda has a great engineering, a great product development and manufacturing system, which brings the best out of this CX-50 hybrid. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you're looking for a car in this price range for a crossover and you want a high efficiency and good handling, well, don't look anywhere else. This is the vehicle to get. If you haven't done so yet, would you please give me a thumbs up and make some comments. And if you can subscribe, that would be truly appreciated. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.